Oh, there's people here. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so sorry that I'm late. You know, it's school run day. I mean, well, every day is school run day, but this is the day where uh, I decided that I would be able to come back for half past nine, which I don't think has happened yet, has it? I get back for half past nine, but I don't have any makeup on and I haven't set all my stuff up. I'm just very sorry again. I'm so sorry. You can hear, this, I'm still clunking, but it's okay. I've got my oil, I've got my food colouring, I've got my spoon. I've got, I've even found some feathers on the school run, so that was good. And uh, I need to pour all this goo into the sink and replace it. And it's literally one minute now. S Club 7. I think someone this morning said don't stop moving. And that was that. Now it's in there. Oh thank, oh, thank you people who have liked this. You know that that is much appreciated. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I think I even need my notes, she says overconfidently. What could possibly go wrong with an attitude like that? Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna flip you, you know. Oh, thank you, even more like that, it's just wonderful. And, and very optimistic, because obviously you don't know if it's, uh, if it's gonna be any good yet, do you? Right, I'm flipping you, you lot. <coughs> Here we go. Let's learn about some ducks. All of the ducks. Uh, yes, right. Hello, hello everybody. It's Lara here from Bear of Science. Oh, can you see my geese? No, geese. In the duck family, don't have any toy ducks, but there you go, that'll do. Right, today's interactive science show is about ducks. Every time you ask me to do an animal, I always come back saying, oh, I'd never thought about dolphins or sharks or giraffes or elephants, and now they're my favorite animal. I'm still finding ducks pretty weird, to be honest with you, but we're gonna learn about them. Um, they've got, you know those, uh, those like bottles that you put on guinea pig hutches and rabbit hutches that they drink from? They've kind of got one of those on their bum. Let's learn more about that by doing an activity. So if you've got a wine glass of water, what you need to do is just pour, I don't know, about two centimetres of oil on top of it. Here we are. So yeah, it's called the uropigal gland. I hope I'm saying that right. And it, um, it produces oil, like it's, it secretes oil. So when you see ducks like beaking around near their bums doing that preening thing they're kind of getting oil out of the little uropagal gland well not kind of they are and they're spreading it all over their bodies why let's find out so it's probably not a massive shocker to you that the water and the oil are not mixing water and oil do not mix why don't they mix chemistry that's not my final answer i'll give you a little bit more than that not that much more um so water particles are what we call polar. Here is a, <laughs> um, it's not a diagram, is it? But here's a particle of water. One end is slightly positive and one end is slightly negative. You'd say that's a polar particle, polar molecule. Um, oil is not that. That's kind of the opposite of that. How do I draw this? It's not polar. It's just got the same charge all over it. So water particles are attracted to each other because they're polar, they line up kind of like magnets. Oil particles are attracted to each other because they're not polar, but polar things and not polar things are not attracted to each other. So that's very briefly why this oil and this water is not mixing. So if, you've, if you came to um, possibly the saddest show we've ever done, the bonfire night show when we were locked down, we did all the different firework activities, then you've done this before. What you do is you get a little blob of food colouring and you put it... Um, into the oily, watery mixture, and you see what happens. Bring you over here. Ah, that's quite a good view, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put a little drop of food colouring in. So yeah, this is supposed to be a firework activity, because what happens is, 
oil is less dense than water, yeah? Oil is floating on top of the water, so we'd say that it's it's less dense, its particles are slightly more spread out, if you like. I'm just going to blob this food colouring in. Now, food colouring um, is based with, is water-based as well, so it's going to sink through the oil, like so. And then, well, this is terrible telly, isn't it? You just, you just wait, and hopefully the little pocket of food colouring will burst through the oil and into the water, and it'll look amazing! Shall I, shall I poke it? I think I'm going to poke it. Come on, life's too short, let's do this. Poke! Oh, beautiful. Is that supposed to look like a firework? Hopefully this bonfire night we will be allowed out of the house and we will get slightly better than that. Still, it's gorgeous though, isn't it? So, I just, I don't want, I don't, some people might be lip reading, so I don't want to tell you all about ducks while you're looking at that but that is really nice I'll, I'll put it in the background here we are so why do ducks have this oily coating well you might think it's waterproofing and you are not wrong um so waterfowl is uh, the sort of family that ducks are part of waterfowl do have bigger uropagal glands so they reckon that's because the oil is obviously used for waterproofing so that water just drops off a duck's back, water off a duck's back. Um, but also, um, it's micro antimicrobial. It kills microbes. Let's do a little bit more to this activity. If you've brought some washing up liquid with you, get some washing up liquid on the uh, handle of a spoon and just give it a little stir in and see what happens. And we'll do a tiny bit more chemistry. So yeah, ducks, just like you, are covered in microbes. And some of those microbes are very bad for the ducks. Um, ducks' feathers are kind of made out of keratin, same stuff that your fingernails are made out of. And the microbes can break down the keratin. Obviously not very useful. So the oil, they reckon, is coating the duck's feathers to protect it from these microbes. Right, get a little bit of washing up liquid in and give it a little swirl. Ah, so pretty. We haven't done this before. You end up with these lovely little balls. It just looks like a potion. If you've got a torch, Go into a dark room after this and shine it through from all different angles and see what patterns you can make on the wall. It's amazing. Here we go. So why, why has that happened? Why is that all mixed together now in a gorgeous little ball of bubbles? Uh, oh, so nice. It's because uh, washing up liquid and soap and things like that are kind of half polar and half not polar. They look like what do they look like? I don't know. They're just half polar and not half not polar. So one end of the washing up liquid attaches to the water particle and one end attaches to the oil particle and it kind of binds it all together. So if you're rescuing a duck or any bird from an oil slick, then first of all, take it to a professional, don't try and clean it yourself. But what they have to do is they have to use soap to get the oil off, but then they have to rinse it really, really, really well. Because if there's any bits of detergent left in the duck's wings, then the oily coating that it's giving itself will just constantly be broken down. So yeah, um, the duck uropagal gland also gets bigger when it's about to lay eggs. So they reckon that also the oil coats the eggs and protects them. So eggs have got little holes in, bacteria and stuff can get into the eggs and infect the chicks. So this oil, preen oil they call it, from the uropagal gland, coats the duck's feathers, stops them decaying in the water and it also protects their eggs. Lovely stuff. Now you'd think that it would waterproof them. But actually that's not, that's not the main waterproofing that the duck has. The duck obviously has feathers. The duck, like many birds, has got two different kinds of feathers. It's got the downy feather, the little pretty fluffy ones. They are not waterproof. And it's got uh, this guy, which um, you'll have seen. It's like a contour feather. And you'll know, this is a terrible example that I got from the park, but you know that if you mess up a feather, you can stroke it and it all kind of fits together again. They've got little barbs on them that patch up kind of like Velcro. So when a duck's preening, it's also making sure that all these contour feathers are in the perfect position so that it's totally waterproof, forms kind of a waterproof case over the downy stuff. Ducklings, they've only got downy feathers, so the mum has to waterproof them. That's all good. Right, <laughs> enough of that. Let's learn about like why ducks are. Ducks have always confused me. And then I found out about wetlands and it really made me feel better. So 
Wetlands are just areas of the world that flood a lot. It might be that they flooded for years and years and years, or it might be that they flood every year for a long time. So wetlands are like a really unique ecosystem where you've got a very unique collection of plants and animals. So you've got plants that are below the surface, plants that are peeking out above the surface. You've got like sort of scorpion type things and diving beetles and spiders. It's like a buffet. And like humans, when we go to a buffet, we might need chopsticks for some of the food, spoons for some of the food and forks. Ducks are basically just one waterfowl creature that years ago evolved to have like different tools to get different bits of the buffet, which is why some of them have long necks and they've got all these amazing different beaks, right? So, so that's made me feel a lot better. Now I kind of get why ducks are different. Let's talk about their bills because that's an important thing that a duck has evolved to be able to live in the wetlands. I'll pull up some pictures that I've got here. So the, the kind of duck that you think of when I say duck is a mallard, all right? Um, let's bring up a picture of it. Here it is. This is your mallard. The males and females look very different. This is a male. Um, so yeah, look at its bill, right? It's, it's really wide and flat. Why does it look like that? Well, it's, it filters things out. So it hasn't got teeth, but it's, it's got these little kind of, I don't know, would you call them spines at the side of its bill? So it takes in water and then it keeps all the little crustaceans and bits of plant that it finds in there and all the um, mud and the water just sort of leaks out through its beak. So ducks have got all kinds of different beaks for all kinds of different purposes. That's what the mallard beak looks like because it eats stuff that it finds on the surface of the water. This is a widgeon, which I think might be my new favourite duck. What do you think this guy eats? Widgeon, I wonder widgeon. Look, the bill's totally different, isn't it? What a cutie. These are them flying. It was when I saw this picture that I thought, oh, all right, ducks are pretty cool. Um, the widgeon eats grass. It's a grazer. It's got a much sort of pointier beak. And the last beak that I'll show you um, is the very aptly named shoveler duck. Take a look at this. What a beast. Look at the beak on her. So this is a shoveler duck um, who swims and kind of has her beak just on the very surface of the water and just shovels everything in, you know, like pond skaters or anything like that, living on the surface. So different kind of beaks, different kind of jobs. I'll show you very quickly what is not a duck. This is a coot. A coot is not a duck. It likes to hang out with ducks, but not actually a duck itself. And the moor hen as well is also not a duck. You can tell because look at its feet. Ducks have webbed feet. More hens and coots do not have webbed feet. It's one of the reasons they're not a duck. But yeah, geese and swans, they're all in the duck family. Actually, very nearly every waterfowl bird is in the duck family. Right, so we've done feathers, we've done bills. Um, very quickly before we finish. Oh yeah, so, oh, oh, let's do another activity. I didn't make this the main activity because I can't do it, but you, it is possible for humans to make a bird call, which will attract ducks. So humans have been hunting ducks for thousands of years. And a very effective way of hunting ducks <coughs> is to make a sound like a female duck, because it just kind of gets the attention of other ducks in the area and they want to fly down to see what it is. So to make a sound like a duck, I can't do it. You make this sound with your mouth, And then you put, make a circle with your fingers like this and put your mouth up to that circle and do that again. And then you wrap your whole hand around that hand so there's like a cup and then you let the air out. Here is not what it sounds like. Oh, oh! show three this week. That was definitely the best. That wasn't bad, that. Hey! I can't really hear what it looks like, it might sound terrible, but that's definitely the best it's been. Keep practicing, people. I've done a practice and then I've done two shows and the third show. Anyway, one of the reasons I wanted to tell you that is because I found these absolutely gorgeous decoy ducks from possibly uh, over 2,000 years ago. Look. Aren't they absolutely stunning? So, this is from the Infinity of Nations website. 
and uh, they call it the Museum of the American Indian. So these were made by people living in America over 2000 years ago. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I couldn't make anything like that now. So you might not feel great about people hunting ducks, but it certainly was an ancient skill to get an important food source. You put a decoy duck on a lake and then you do this, <coughs> but in a better way, nearby, the ducks fly down, you kill them. Uh, right, <clears throat> sorry, probably not the target audience for that kind of thing. Um, so very quickly, there's two different kinds of duck. There's a dabbling duck, which is the ones that stick the bums in the air and just kind of root around under the surface of the water. And there are diving ducks, which as you would expect, dive right down to find water. So I'll show you a picture of a diving duck, which will lead us to a very sad story. Look at that. This is a ruddy duck. So uh, these mallards are dabbling ducks. And this ruddy, ruddy duck is a diver. It dives all the way down. So, yeah. Sad story about ruddy ducks, right? Um, <clears throat> tale as old as time. British people saw a duck in America, liked it, brought it over, kept it in captivity in the 30s. By the 50s, the ruddy duck had escaped and there were loads of them, like about 6,000 at their peak in the UK. And of course, they spread all across Europe, didn't they? <clears throat> so now there's ruddy ducks everywhere. Well, this was fine, but as the numbers of the ruddy duck were rising, numbers of a duck called the white-headed duck, which is uh, native to Europe, it's the only duck of its kind in Europe, numbers of white-headed duck were going down and down and down and down, and it's now very nearly extinct. It's in trouble. And this is because the ruddy duck has quite an aggressive way of mating, and it's mating with the white-headed ducks and making uh, hybrids, so like a, a kind of a new species that can breed with each other. So eventually the white-headed duck is just going to disappear and we'll just have ruddy ducks and hybrids. Now Spain um, have got a small population of white-headed ducks, so they started protecting them, doing great things like uh, banning hunting and uh, protecting the wetlands where they lived, but Spain were like, this isn't actually that useful as, like, Europe's all connected, you guys have to help. So in a, a sort of weirdly great piece of teamwork, Europe were just like, oh yeah, okay, we'll just all kill all our ruddy ducks. And that is what's happened, is what's happening. So the British government have spent about three million pounds on hiring people who are like professional shooters to just kill all the ruddy ducks in the country. So we've gone from 6,000 to, they think, maybe like 15 or so. I don't think they've caught them all because some people who really like them haven't told the people with the guns where they are. Um, but I just thought this is a very interesting source of debate because your initial feeling might be, well, that's just awful. Why We can't do that. The RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, um, agree with what they're doing. I'll read you what they've said. <clears throat> We are faced with a stark choice. Either we act to stop ruddy ducks spreading from the UK, or we stand by and watch as the white-headed duck is pushed ever closer to extinction. Taking this action will help secure the future of the white-headed duck, while the ruddy duck will continue to thrive in its native North America. So the ruddy duck species will be totally fine if we kill them all. This is obviously the individual ducks in the UK will, will not be fine. So I don't, I don't know what you think about that. Just before we go to story time, because this is the order that I did it in too, I'll show you a picture of the white-headed duck. Because I had a, a lot of strong opinions about what they were doing, and then I saw a picture of the white-headed duck, and it kind of changed my mind. Look, this is the white-headed duck. I mean, come on. It's very, very, very extinct. So that's just something for you to chat about today with people in your family and decide how you feel about that. Right, it's time for story time. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, that was... Uh... <coughs> Just me preparing the story time. <laughs> okay. Right. Should you feed ducks bread? Is the subject of story time. So again, if you have any strong opinions on that, get them out now and then see if you're right. It's it's a lot more complicated than I first thought. Here we go. If you've ever eaten sweet corn, then you must have done this move. The sweet corn squeeze. You see, the, the little nubby bit pops out. It's so satisfying. And uh, we all know that that bit tastes best. Well, it turns out that wheat has a nubby bit as well. It's a bit dark, isn't it? I'll just turn the light down a bit. There we go. Wheat also has a nubby bit. Uh, it's called the wheat germ. In fact, a grain of wheat is kind of like an egg. Uh, the germ is like the yolk where the new plant or the new 
chick grows from. Um, then there's the endosperm, which is kind of like the egg, wi egg white, uh, which supplies the little baby thing, plant or duck or whatever, with nutrients as it grows. And wheat is even kind of wrapped in a little shell called bran. So humans have been eating wheat for thousands of years. We found breadcrumbs in Jordan that are 14,000 years old. We love bread. Um, for a very, very, very long time, bread was made from flour that had been milled in windmills, uh, which is just where you mash grains between two stones, two wheel, uh, mill wheels. So it's quite a gentle process and it kept all a lot of the nutrients in the flour. And then someone worked out how you could mill flour using massive steel rollers. We made so much flour. This is our show, so I'm just going to go a bit overboard. We made so much flour, but it did kind of kill a lot of the nutrients in the flour, mashing it up in those metal rollers. Um, and then we took the bran out of flour because yeah, it tastes better, it makes it nicer. And uh, someone realised that the germ is the first bit to go mouldy. So if you take the germ out of bread, then uh, you get bread that lasts a much longer time. Yay! So by the 70s, bread was soft and white and it didn't go off and it had very, very little nutritional value. Uh, this wasn't great for humans obviously, but it really wasn't good for ducks either, because by 2015, humans were throwing uh, six million loaves of bread a year to the cute little water birds when it was announced that this was doing the ducks severe harm and that we should please stop feeding them bread. So what was happening was the ducks were absolutely loving the bread, uh, but it was filling their stomachs, leaving no space for the nutrients that they needed. Uh, they weren't bothering to forage for other foods, so they weren't getting a balanced diet. Baby ducks weren't even learning to do it at all. And a lack of nutrients can lead to a condition in birds called angel wing, where their feathers stick out at a really weird angle and, uh, and they can't fly. Very, very sad. So, uneaten bread was also causing a uh, algae to grow on the surface of ponds and lakes, encouraging rats. Uh, a lot of birds gathering in one place meant a lot of poo, which encouraged the growth of algae. I'm not going to tell you why a lot of poo is a bad thing. So we stopped feeding the ducks. <clears throat> Did this solve all the problems? Well, <sighs> no. See, the trouble is that a lot of ducks and geese and swans existed because they had been getting a lot of bread and without it it seems that they some of them didn't have enough to eat uh, and were dying of starvation in some places a mysterious organization even put up signs by ponds not based on any science saying it's okay to feed us bread the birds around here are dying you gotta give us bread someone took it it was only up for about three days but someone took a photo of it put it on facebook it went massively viral and everyone was very cross and like what do we what do we do ah, there's no right answer to bread or not to bread that is the question well the canal and river trust have the answer they did an adorably scientifically dubious taste test by throwing different uh, leaves at ducks kale got 10 out of 10 but if you're heading to a pond and you don't have any kale or you don't want to give the ducks kale because it's expensive who does that uh, then other duck friendly foods are defrosted peas sweet corn <laughs> <laughs> it's raining and sweet corn. Um, oats. Oats are very nutritious and very good for ducks. Or rice. Absolutely fine to give birds dried rice. It will not explode in their stomachs. That's a complete myth. Birds eat dried rice in the wild. It's kind of annoying for the farmers. Of course, you could feed them some seeds. Um, basically, buy some bird food or raid your cupboard for cheap grains. As long as you're not taking avocado or salted food to the pond, you're absolutely fine. The conclusion is simple. Birds, like humans, appreciate a mixture of foods and a little bit of imagination. The end. Well, kind of the end. Oh, I did even more reading after that story time and, and found a thing from the RSPB again, which said that causing a lot of birds to rely on food, like if, if birds know that when they go to one place, there will be food, you get an awful lot of birds a kind of unnatural amount of birds in one place. This can lead to um, single males and single males all want to mate with females so they end up attacking the females which can lead to the females getting injured. Sometimes the females die in and uh, a lot of poo everywhere which apparently affects like oxygen levels in the water, bath the environment. Uh, so I don't know anymore. If you're gonna feed the ducks don't give them white bread, just give them like oats or rice or any of the other things I mentioned. And I suppose if you can, just watch the birds and enjoy them without feeding them. 
then I, 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 I don't know. It's just another debate. I feel like ducks have just caused nothing but trouble around here, to be honest, this week. All I've done is, is debate things and flip-flop on my opinion. Huh, but anyway, that's the end of the duck show. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are new and you don't know who I am, then I teach a show like this every week on a different subject and you always bring stuff and we do an activity. And I also do a home ed lesson every week, uh, which are live on YouTube on, at 10.30 on Thursdays. So if you come to my YouTube channel, 10.30 on Thursdays or 9.30 Wednesdays, I'll be here and we can have some fun together. If you would like to support me, you totally can. Um, I actually bring out a magazine. I love this business model. Instead of teaching a small amount of people on Zoom, I teach as many people as I can possibly find on the internet. And then instead of paying me a large amount of money, they pay me like five or six quid a month. And enough people are paying me five or six quid a month. But this is my actual job. <sighs> Hashtag blessed. So yeah, I write a magazine that I send to my supporters to say thank you so much for supporting me. The next one on rainforests is about to come out. But if you sign up now, I'll send you the latest one which is on pirates uh graphic designer husband draws me a comic which i write are there any good pirates is this issue there's a, an organization saving uh, whales in uh, quite dramatic ways do you agree with them or not you can decide it's got lots of activities that i can't do online i'll send you a free piece of string so you can tie some knots you lucky devils like did pirates wear wooden legs wouldn't that have chafed quite a lot I'm very proud of Data Science Magazine. Thank you so much to everyone who is getting it. And um, there's various other things I'll send you as well. I'll send you some badges, some rainbow glasses. I'll be very grateful if you sign up. And you can cancel at any time. Uh, you just go to my coffee page. I think somewhere on YouTube now is a link to coffee. It's like an about section. I, was like, I don't know. Google it. Coffee. K-O-F-I. Data Science. You'll find me. Thank you. Right, I'm, I've stalled a bit. Because very briefly, just before the end of the show, I wanted to talk about duck penises. Some of you will have done reproduction lessons with me. It'd be totally cool when you're talking about penises. Some of you will be like, what? What? This, what? It's supposed to be about ducks and bread and good oil. Well, if you don't want to hear about duck penises, then turn away now. Just very briefly, uh, the ruddy duck, <coughs> ruddy duck, has a corkscrew shaped penis. And the, so I should, well, explain. It, most animals and plants, um, all of them, I don't know, the vast majority of creatures, to make a new creature, you get sperm and egg, you put them together, you make a new creature, all right? So humans, uh, the male has the sperm, the female has the egg, you put them together. That's usually what happens, like plants, the pollen is kind of the sperm and that gets to the egg in one of the flowers. So ducks usually, actually birds don't generally have penises. What they do is they just touch their bodies together and the sperm and the egg kind of meet and that's how they reproduce. Apparently it's much better because it's obviously a lot faster. So um, if you're like a predator, then it would be very easy to kill a bird while it was mating. So they just do it super fast. But ducks, some ducks do have penises. Yeah, the ruddy duck has a corkscrew shaped penis. It is incredibly long. There are videos online, which you should only look at with an adult, where a scientist has got a, like a clear plastic corkscrew tube that they presumably made for the job. But they're holding up against a ruddy duck and the ruddy duck is inserting its penis into this corkscrew shaped tube and the female ruddy duck has a vagina that receives the penis that is also a corkscrew that goes the opposite way so there you go if you don't remember anything else from this show apparently it's because like i say ruddy ducks are very aggressive maters so the female has developed ways to kind of foil the ruddy duck yeah i'm just gonna leave it there thank you so much for coming I'll see you next week, same time, same place, for another show. I don't know what it's about yet. Uh, I will put the event up on Facebook. Uh, or on over on my Facebook page right now, I'm about to do a uh, lesson. <laughs> peas all over my computer. On wind turbines, which you're very welcome to come to. I've just remembered that some people might have commented on Facebook. So please, by all means, do leave. That is the end, that is the end of the show. Um, but I'll just go to Facebook to see if anyone's left me a message. This is the bit where I get really nervous that no one's left me a message. This would be super embarrassing. Oh, comments! Yay, thanks guys! Oh, hi Patricia! Oh, good, you loved the white-headed duck! Oh, interesting, all right. Good. I think it's good to have the information, isn't it? Because if you just read in a newspaper that they were killing ruddy ducks, you'd probably just instinctively go, that's terrible! There's Patricia, there's daisies. Thank you. You shouldn't feed ducks bread, it's bad for them. Correct, well done. Ah oh, yes, it's Unison Aids and Shuki. I should just say hello to you. I don't need to read the comments. Oh, and it's Maya. Hello, Maya. Or is it Maya? 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 You can tell me later. 
it exploded. What exploded? It exploded? Oh, it exploded. Probably the food coming, not the glass. Okay, good. Oh, thanks for coming, Elot. It's so nice to know that you are watching. And um, yeah, I'd better go and get ready for my wind turbines lesson, which is on Facebook. There will be comments on that one if you want to come and uh, harass me in the comments. I do love that. Uh, I think you're commenting some more, but I can't see it. I'm going to click off. Let you guys go about your day. <laughs> I'll have some second breakfast. That's probably what I'm going to do. See you soon, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Bye.